here in my elf on the shelf that I kept. Uh, let me see if we can get him on the start. All right, you guys, so this is a posterior view. It's a posterior view. This is literally, I put the spine as a reference. So we're looking at the back of literally the triangular shaped scapula. I put this triangle there just as a reference, just to remind you that I'm literally looking at this flat bone at the back. Elevation pullers are going to be superior, pulling, like literally pulling up. Those are going to be our elevators. Depressors are literally going to be pulling down. So our axis here isn't necessarily like bilateral AP, because again, this is not a, this is an articulation, it's not a joint. So above elevation pullers, Below this horizontal line, depression pulls closer to the spine. So our kind of up down line border here, closer to the spine, it's trying to pull the scapula to the spine. That's a retraction pull. Make sense? These muscles on the inside, the more medial side, are trying to pull in a direction of scapular retraction. And so therefore, whoever's on the other side of this border is trying to pull the scapula away from, trying to pull the scapula away from the spine, so they're going to be protraction. So far, so bad. Elevators on the top, pressers on the bottom, retractors more medial, protractors more lateral. And then you get to the spin. You get to the to, uh, speed, the merry-go-round. But instead of the merry-go-round being here, like, like the merry-go-round, it's like a like a uh, like a Ferris wheel. Upward rotation pullers, downward rotation pullers. Make sense? Then I try to put some reference. Retractors pull towards the spine. Protractors pull away from the spine. Elevators above, pressors below. Therefore, your muscles of the scapula that you're accountable for, I will note, these are just muscles that are pulling on the scapula. <clears throat> if you recall, I mentioned, I, I just think this is a graduate level thing, but how the lat crosses the scapula to get to the shoulder and the pec. So you have other big, powerful muscles that can yank down on the humerus, and because the humerus is attached to the scapula, it could be, but I'm just holding you accountable to the muscles that are actually tugging on the scapula alone. Fair enough? In other words, if someone was laying down and you grabbed their arm and you pulled down on the arm, it's gonna pull in the direction of depression. So your lats and your pecs and things that cross the scapula get to the shoulder, it's a similar thing. They're pulling on the shoulder, but by doing so, they're also pulling on the scapula you cross. So I'm only holding you accountable for muscles that are tugging on the scapula itself. Any questions about the layout? Okay. Do you guys remember for the deltoid how I did a red circle to say, hey, this is one muscle? And then one area of it crosses, the other area crosses, okay? So it's the same with that trapezius, that it's one muscle, but we're gonna have different fibers that have, that could have different pulls, even though all of the fibers have something in common.
like the storm in the cup showing everything at once and it will flip it, flip it around. My favorite muscle from when I was an undergrad was the trapezius because I remember <clears throat> thinking going into the class, this muscle makes zero sense. Like there's no reason this muscle should exist. It's like a duck-billed platypus, you know, how does that exist? And then after Dr. George explained it, it's really, really cool. So just, it's another fan-shaped muscle. All the fibers have something in common, but not all the fibers have everything in common. Serratus anterior we're going to talk about, pec minor we're going to talk about, beta scapula, rhomboids. We're going to combine minor and major into rhomboids, plural, because they have the same functions. Just remember scapular motion, elevation, compression. <clears throat> um, some people refer to the scapula as ab and adducting. <clears throat> people like me that are come from a physics background, we don't like that because what's getting closer to what? Meaning that my scapula gets further away from my midline on my back, but it's getting closer to my midline and my front. Like, so it's kind of one of those like, well, this is getting closer, that's getting further. So we like the retraction and the protraction because like you think about retracting a bow and then protraction progress. So we prefer that verbiage and it also keeps ab and adduction for lateral flexion. So it's consistent. So that's why we kind of prefer the, the retraction protraction verbiage. And then remember the upward and downward rotation of the scapula is helping our arms get over our head. Because if we didn't, if our scapula didn't upwardly rotate, our shoulder can only get about 120. So by leaning the scapula, we can get our hands up our head. So that's why the scapula is going to upwardly and downwardly rotate. So if we have elevation and depression, we've got to have elevation pullers and depression pullers. We call them elevators and we call them depressors. We're going to look at those muscles and how they pull in those directions. We have protraction, retraction. We're going to have protraction pullers and retraction pullers. And if we have upward and downward rotation, we're going to have upward rotation pullers and downward rotation. All right, let's start off with a good old pec minor. So the pectoralis minor. Not to be confused with the pectoralis major. Pectoralis major crosses the shoulder joint. Remember the lady between two majors? <clears throat> so the pec major is coming from the sternum, clavicle, crossing the shoulder, and it's going to come on those strips, the whole body. The pectoralis minor is like deep to it, so it's like a soleus compared to a gastroc, it's deep. Three, four, five ribs. But instead of crossing into the shoulder, it hooks on that uh, coracoid process. The coracoid process, hopefully you recall from anatomy, is that, that anterior hook of the scapula. This is part of the scapula. We had some muscles that attached there, right? The bicep short head was there, coracoid, brachialis, that's why they call coracoid process. So this little hook is part of the scapula. And it's there to give anterior starting muscles some leverage to, to tug on the scapula. Okay. So remember, areas of bone are still part of the bone. KDN is still part of Louisiana. So the acromion is part of the scapula. The coracoid is part of the scapula. The spine is part of the scapula. So this is still pulling on the scapula. Uh, the easiest motion to see pectoralis minor from this visual is how it would be pulling the scapula down, pulling in a direction of down, pulling in a direction of depression. Does everybody see that? It pulls more ways, but we're going to start with the most obvious, and that's a depression pull. Okay, we're good with that. I think the second easiest one from this view is a downward rotation pull. You have to use my props here. Uh, I had more props, but I'm going to use a Tootsie Pop. 
It's a tough problem. Okay, so think of it like this. You have your spine of your scapula, I'm going to use as a teeter-totter. Uh, what a teeter-totter is? PB? Okay. So I'm going to take the spine of the scapula. The part of the spine that's closer, I'm sorry, the, the part of the spine to the spine, the part of the spine of the scapula that's closer to the actual spine, I'm going to use the stick part, and the part of the scapula that's that's further away, I'm going to use the little meaty part because this kind of represents like where the chromium and the coracoid is. So what I want you to do is visualize the scapula as a teeter-totter. And when the scapula upwardly rotates, the teeter-totter is going to do this. And when the scapula downwardly rotates, the teeter-totter is going to do that. So far, so good. Plus, everybody understand? So if the teeter-totter does this with the upward rotation, that pectoralis minor is going to be pulling on that coracoid process to pull it back down. That's why it's a downward rotator, because it's on this side of the teeter-totter axis. The axis of upward and downward rotation is roughly around there. So muscles that are pulling on this side of the teeter-totter is going to pull upward, and muscles on this side are going to so that's why this pec minor, visualize it, is a downward rotator. This would be upward rotation, downward rotator, pulling in a direction of downward rotation. Does that make sense? So it's downward or it's being in the scapula rotation? Downward rotation? You, you need upward rotators to make you upward rotate? The downward rotator, the downward rotators can do upper rotation, but through eccentrics. So I didn't know if that was the gist of your question. But remember, function is important. So if we look at the spine, maybe this analogy will work better. If we look at the spine as um, try to do it on the right side, upward rotation, downward rotation. The pectoralis minor, when I upwardly rotate, the pectoralis minor is trying to pull me this way. It's trying to pull the lateral part of my scapula, pulling in a direction of downward rotation. It's trying to make that coracoid process get closer to the ribs. Make sense? So the two functions, there's a third, but the two functions that I think are easiest to see with this anterior view is the depression pull. And in terms of the teeter-totter, the downward rotation. So it's a downward rotator depressor. I'm gonna to get to the third one, but we just have to have a different view. It's better to see a lateral view for the protraction pull. So here's your pec minor. This is a lateral view. So notice how the muscle starts more anterior and it runs from anterior to posterior. You can't really see that from just a front view. I mean, it's hard, it, it's hard to, if I said, hey guys, this is further than that, you, you don't see that from this picture. Like it just looks like it runs straight there. Does that make sense? So this muscle comes from the three, four, five ribs, which are more anterior, and shoots back and is pulling the coracoid not only down, but also forward. It's pulling in a direction of protraction as well. And it's hard to see from this picture, that's why I have this picture. This picture is easier to see how it would be a protraction forward, trying to bring that coracoid process to the anterior part of the rib cage. Does that make sense? So the pectoralis minor, depressor, downward rotator, protractor. So when you're doing bench press or other things, 
I'm not saying you're not working your pec minor, but that pec minor work is a scapular influencer. So, you know, if you're doing, you know, a lot of times you're doing shoulder stuff and your scapula is going to contribute as well, right? So I just want to make sure that's clear. I, I'd hate for you to be doing a rehab exercise for a, a strained pec minor and you're just doing shoulder stuff. That's a scapular puller. It doesn't cross the shoulder. Let's look at what it would look like in your circle. Pectoralis minor. Depression puller. Presser. Remember, I said the muscles on this side are the retractors. So on this side of the up down, it's a protractor. Trying to pull the scapula further away from the spine. Does that make sense? It's pulling anteriorly. This would be pulled posterior. And then this is upward rotation pull. This is downward rotation pull. So it's trying to pull in the direction of downward rotation. Make sense? So a good way to stretch, I learned this from a, a good gal, a good friend of mine, but uh, I taught him like one of my first step classes. He teaches biomechanics at uh, Palmer, a chiropractic university. But if you did like something like this, where you are upwardly rotating the scapula, you're elevating the scapula, and then if you're leaning forward, you're retracting the scapula. So that would be like a, an example of how to really isolate the stretch of that muscle because you're moving the scapula in three different opposite directions of the muscle. This, let me make sure I have it right. Pectoralis minor, scapula depressor, protractor, down rotation. Any questions about pec minor? Let's take a look and get the. Yeah, I would say I love the different things. Does that make sense? It's pulling, it's trans, pulling forward, okay, pulling down. And trying to pull the teeter totter. So like this view is a right. This would be trying to make the teeter-totter do this. And you got other muscles that are going to be trying to make the teeter-totter do that. What video is this? You ready to move on? This is a good view. The last thing I was like, this is deep to the superficial. So again, there's the pec minor, and then on top of it, the All right, let's next up. This is a weird, this is this is an awesome muscle. It's a cool muscle. Serratus anterior. Um, serrated, you know, you think about a serrated blade. So it's like the, the muscles with the ribs, so it's like a serrated blade, right? And, and anterior is to the pull. It's pulling the scapula forward to the ribs. Very similar to the pec minor, but it's just it has a different coverage area. So it's pulling more of the scapula. Um, do you guys remember the subscapulatus? 
laid in between the scapula and the thorax. Remember, like the scapula was a piece of bread, the ribs were a piece of bread, and the subscap was a piece of meat in between the bread. Right? That's why the scapula floats, because you got muscles and other things that are, that, are, that are in between. This is another muscle that passes in between. My favorite thing about the serratus anterior, how do I put it? So I'm going to pass the skeleton around. Okay? I'm showing you the exact same thing. You see the dotted lines on the, on the posterior? That's where the serratus anterior inserts or is pulling from. The dotted line. Now, it's not on the outside, it's on the inside. So what I'll do is I'll walk around. See, I know this is blue rim. So this muscle isn't passing over the top. It's going in between the ribs and the shoulder blade, and it's pulling all of that blue stuff forward from the inside. It's a lot of coverage area. So the obvious pull is a protraction pull, trying to pull the scapula anterior at an anterior pull. Serratus anterior, it's a big protractor. Uh, when people have winging issues, you ever seen people do the party trick, you know, where they can put their fingers in between their scapula? That's a serratus anterior issue. Um, or serratus anterior. There's an arm dominance issue, too. I don't want to bog you down with that. If you're curious, come talk to me. At but that's the serratus anterior issue. That's why I like doing exercises to try to recruit the serratus anterior to keep that scapula flush. Um, the scapula is held by negative pressure and muscles. You know, again, it's not a, a joint, a synovial joint, per se. So when that serratus anterior isn't innervating enough to keep it flush, it's going to wing. It's going to wing out. And again, there's an arm dominance issue there, there, but I won't get into that. All right. Easy function to see is the protraction. The harder function to see is the upper rotation, but I'm going to try to do my best to explain. Okay. The axis of rotation for the spine for upward and downward rotation is somewhere around here, but also this is just a so this is a really tough visual because, like, the spine, the, the ribs are telling me one thing and the scapula is telling me another thing, if that makes sense. Like, like the view of the scapula should be to the back, but the ribs are kind of on the side. So it, it, it's kind of a tough artistic expression. This is, this is a, a, little, a little better. So notice how the origin of the serratus interior, see all this red stuff? Okay. All this red stuff. There's your acromion. There's your tear totter. So what I'd like for you to notice is 90% of the origin of the next serratus anterior is under the tear totter. So what that means is if you were, let's say I'm going to use my Ken doll. Um, I, this is just a silly analogy, but it works for me. In the Wild West, they would have like these these movie clips. I don't know if this ever even happened, but you know, you'd have a, a good guy riding on a horse and he'd take a lasso and he'd lasso it around the bad guy. And sometimes for effect, the lasso would fall to the feet and they'd pull and then the person would, would, would spin, the feet would get pulled from up, right? cause rotation. That's actually how I want you to kind of look at this. You have, here's the first, and let's say, the serratus anterior is pulling underneath the axis of rotation and it's trying to rotate the person. So, here's the teeter totter. The serratus anterior is going to be pulling underneath it and it's going to be pulling like this direction of upward rotation. Protraction pull, upward rotation pull. My thumb is trying to represent the spine. Protraction pull, protractor, upward rotation pull. Does that make sense?
see what that would look like. Make sure I didn't make a mistake. So right, the interior, <coughs> protraction puller, pulling the scapula further away from the spine, and also a upward rotation pull. Sarah, feel free to chime in if there were any tricks that she learned to, to remember some of these. Feel free to set your mm -hmm. There's my serratus anterior. Now the, the arrow is just pointing to the muscle. It's not inferring full. So again, we try to take the scapula and pull it forward to the anterior ribs. We'll also try to do this too. Right, here's the visual. sense? You see how the muscle is going in between the scapula and the ribs? Like, like meat in between two pieces of bread. And so if my left hand represents the left scapula, the fibers, the fingers, the serrated, the finger-like projections are going underneath the scapula and pulling forward. Check out the upper rotation pull. Again, I like to look at it like like if the person's head is the spine. And obviously, from a torque standpoint, the fibers that are lower have a better mechanical pull, right? Like they have more torque, they have more mechanical arm. As we get closer and closer to the axis, we have less and less moment arm. But still, all the fibers are technically under the head, under the axis of rotation. It's just these lower fibers have much better torque. So that's why, like, you see these lower fibers have more movement in them, because they're covering more distance. See what I mean? Serratus anterior, scapular protractor, upper rotation. Common exercise for serratus anterior is like scapular protractions. Right? You have a ball or you have a weight or even on the wall where something's trying to retract you, so you need to recruit the protractors by trying to innovate. Typically, people's dominant arm, I'll just touch on it. Typically, people's dominant arm has have much more um, fatigue resistance or it's anterior because your dominant arm, you do scapula stuff more. And if you're right-handed, I'm left-handed, so my serratus anterior is a little bit more innervated than my non. So that's why typically people that wing their scapula, it's their non-dominant arm because their non-dominant serratus anterior isn't as, uh, as toned as their dominant. Well, we all have that friend that does that party trick you know, where they put their fingers in between the skin. Go to that one. It's a good another view of the serratus anterior. I don't know if you can see it. Right. Let's go uh, levator scapula. 
I like this muscle because it kind of has pull a little bit in it, levator, elevator. So a muscle that's pulling in the direction of elevation of the scapula. Um, the downward rotation pull, so the axis of rotation for, uh, for our seesaw, right, our, our teeter-totter. So if the axis of rotation of our teeter-totter is here, you can see how the levator scapula is trying to do this to it. So, so um, if I pull this way, that would be downward. If I pull this way, it would be upward. Does that make sense? So here's the spine of the scapula. Here's the axis of the teeter-totter. This muscle is pulling like, like this. It's pulling in a direction of downward rotation. Elevation, downward rotation. See if uh, its, it's component is not great because of how vertical it runs. Let me see if I gave you the... Yeah, so the levator scapula is kind of debatable, but technically it does have, even though it's very north, northern, it does have like a, a, a lefty... So in other words, it's trying to bring the spine not only up, but it's trying to bring the scapula not only up, but closer to the spine. So there is a, a, a smaller component of retraction pull. It's not as prominent as some of these other fibers, but it is trying to bring this closer to that. Okay. So elevator, retractor, downward rotator, and I tried to explain how it pulls. Downward rotation is the hardest one to see. Check out the down rotation pull. <clears throat> That's a tough one. I would, I would, if I ruled the world, I would have it go more into upward so that you could really accentuate how it would pull back down. Does that make sense? So if I if I were if I had the magic to be able to do this, I would have the scapula do this. Think of it like this, guys. If I had a string. <laughs> If I had a string attached to this side of the scapula, if my scapula upwardly rotated, wouldn't this part go down? So if this part goes down, that muscle's getting longer. So it's going to pull back up to try to make the, the, this side pull back up. Make sense? Okay, let's try again. There's the spine. Here's the levator scapula pulling this way. Okay. If my spine upwardly rotates, this muscle's getting longer. So if it pulls this way, it's trying to downwardly, it's pulling in a direction of downward rotation. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's why I said I wish this video would, would have more of the upper rotation so that we could see how that muscle would be trying to pull it back down. We don't really see it lengthen as you upward to rotate. So remember, this is a tier top. So there's the axis. So if I'm pulling on this side of the axis, I'm trying to draw the teeter totter down. There's the levator scapula right there. Again, it, in terms of primary, secondary, tertiary, very tertiary, but it still has a component. It's still, as we're looking at the right side, north, west. So that little bit of west is trying to pull it across. Nothing like the rhomboids. Rhomboids have a 
more west northward. So. All right, guys, let's, I'm going to save the rest for um, Friday, but let's review. Let's just review. <clears throat> Pectoralis minor, presser, protractor, downward rotate. Tight folds. Serratus anterior, protractor, upward rotate. Elevator scapula, elevator, downward rotate. And for class on Friday, we'll do the trapezius, which is probably our most complex, say the most complex. So right, this interior is kind of tricky to see. It's just that the, the, the traps take up so much surface area, but it's a band. All the fibers are going to have something in common, and then the top and the bottom are going to pull. One's pulling up, another's pulling down. But all the fibers actually pull in a direction of retraction, and all the fibers pull in a direction of upward rotation. That's going to take me a little bit of explaining to show you how. It's a force couple. Watch. Any questions? We're almost at the end, guys. We're almost at the end. Y'all have a good one.